These are questions 41 through 46 from the New York State Chem Regents, June 2016. For question 41, we have a balanced equation representing a reaction, and we're asked about the statement describing the changes in energy and bonding for the reactant. All right, so anytime we're on the reactant side, reactant, sorry, I can't spell, which is the left-hand side of the arrow, of course, the right-hand side of your products. What do we know? We have reactants absorbing energy, so energy is absorbed. So we have bonds, and we have bonds breaking. So let's apply that information, of course, to the answers. And sure enough, energy is absorbed, it's not released. And, of course, H2O, which is the reactant here, the bonds are broken, or choice two. So this is just, again, facts you need to know. Opposite for products. Products release energy and bonds are formed. Let's take a look at question 42. All right, so we're at standard pressure. What is the temperature at which a saturated solution of NH4Cl has a concentration of 6 grams of ammonium chloride and 100 grams of water. Now, before you go reaching for the calculator, you're dealing with saturated solution, you're dealing with temperature, and the mass of a solute in a given amount of solvent, which is water. So, the reason why I'm saying this is because that means to you, you want to go ahead and take a look at the solubility curves. The solubility curves are reference table G, and what we're looking at here is for a saturated solution of NH4Cl and we're dealing with 60 grams so I'm not so great at this but let's try it right here's my 60 gram line that was pretty good here is where the ammonium chloride or NH4 is crossing it and remember it said 100 grams of water sometimes they're sneaky sneaky so you gotta check that and I go down and I try to approximate as best I can where the temperature lies. Now I didn't do a great job with the line there, but I'm gonna say I don't know, anywhere from maybe 64 to 66, somewhere you know, mid 60s. So let's take a look. And sure enough, of course, what's the closest match? Choice one, 66 degrees. Let's keep going. So that's a skill 42, 43 aqueous solution that has the highest boiling point at standard uh, pressure. Your highest boiling point is going to be for a solution as opposed to just plain water, and you want the most particles. And what I mean by particles are would be the ions dissolved in the water. Okay, so something dissolved in water is going to have a higher boiling point and at the same time a lower freezing point than just pure water. Well, there's two factors that come into play. One is concentration. And the other is how many particles, the salt, if it's a salt, it breaks up into. So breaking apart. So concentration and breaking apart. And if we go through this, if I go through one molar KCl versus two molar KCl choice three, one molar doesn't have a chance. One molar CaCl2 versus two molar CaCl2, again, one molar doesn't have a chance. Now, choices three and four, concentrations are the same, so it's going to come down to the number of particles. KCl, for every one KCl, it breaks up into two particles. For CaCl2, it breaks up into three particles. One calcium, two chlorines. So there's my answer. So that's a little more steps maybe involved than some of the other questions. I'm going to call it a skill type question. And let's move on to 44. For question 44, we have a system in equilibrium that's asking which change causes the equilibrium to shift. It doesn't say left or right, just that it shifts at all. So this is Le Chatelier's principle. You probably went over a few of these with your teacher. And let's take a look. Well, increasing pressure, that only occurs for a gas. Take a look at this equation, there's no gases. Can't be pressure. Increasing temperature, is that going to go ahead and shift the equilibrium? You bet. 
because the increasing temperature is adding energy, so it's going to shift, in this case, to the right. They didn't ask that, they just wanted to know about the shift. Uh, choice three, adding a noble gas. Gas not having an effect here, because pressure doesn't have an effect. And adding a catalyst, it will speed up both the forward and the reverse, so it cancels each other out. All right, so let's go to 45. So I, I'm going to say 44 is kind of facts, applying facts to a skill. For 45, which hydrocarbon is saturated? Well, you have to know what a hydrocarbon is, which of course is just carbon and hydro hydrogens. Saturated hydrocarbon, you're looking for an alkane. So that's a fact. And if you can't recognize it based on the formulas alone, you're given the alkane formula here. CnH2n plus 2. So plug in the number of carbons, and then go ahead and plug in for hydrogens, and you'll know what answer fits. So if we go back, it can't be choice 1 or 2, not enough hydrogens. If I go to choice 3, if I have 4, if it's CnH2n plus 2, and it's 4 carbons, then it's 2 times 4. Right, which is 8 plus 2, which is 10. So choice 3 doesn't work. It has to be choice 4. Okay, one more question in this set. 46, which volume of 0.6 molar H2SO4 exactly neutralizes 100 mils of 0.3 BaOH2? Well, we're dealing here with neutralization, and we're dealing with a calculation. This is acid-base H2SO4. Hopefully you can recognize it as an acid and BaOH2 is a base. They neutralize one another, so you need the neutralization equation. Let me go ahead and erase everything here, and let's find the equation. The equation would be on reference table T. Actually, it's the titration equation. It's the same thing. I call it neutralization, but that's what happens. Titration, of course, again, is where you're going to end up with equal moles of an acid and a base. I almost said blase, but it's a base. So, molarity of my acid, volume of my acid, molarity of my base, volume of my base. Now, H2SO4, I'd recommend writing the formula for the acid and the base above in case the number of H's and the number of OH's don't match. If they don't match, you would have to put the number of H's and OH's in the equation. But sulfuric acid, you get two H's for every one. Barium hydroxide, you get two hydroxides for every one. So they cancel one another out. Okay, so my molarity of my acid is 0.6 molar. My volume of my acid, I don't know. That's my X on the other side. My molarity of my base is 0.3. And my volume is 100 mils. And now I go ahead, please use the calculator, plug every number in, and you're going to get 0.3 times 100 divided by 0.6. And sure enough, your answer is choice 2. Check out the last four questions from the multiple choice of the June 2016 Regions exam in the next video.